For this episode, we are once again drifting back in time to the early 1920s to examine a killer who shot five men dead in cold blood. Most of his victims had tried to do him a favor by giving him a ride. Murder is not a new phenomenon, nor is serial murder. There are some horrific examples such as the Axe Man of New Orleans and of course Jack the Ripper. Some details become hazy with time, but we will do our best to explore the facts. Now let's go back 100 years to explore the case of a monster who drifted around Louisiana and Texas, killing as he went. Azib Vadrine, the Louisiana Executioner. Azib Vadrine was born on July 12, 1898, in Ville Platte, Louisiana. He earned a living by farming and was known as a hard worker in the community. But those who were close to him described how he fell into emotional turmoil and periods of extreme sadness when he was a young man. In 1918, he married a girl named Lillian Andrews, who was reported to have been 14 years old compared to the 20-year-old Vadrine. His wife was one of the primary sources who could provide insight into his mental state. Perhaps it was this internal struggle or simply greed that pushed him to begin finding ways to supplement his farm's income. Another man who lived nearby shared last names with Azib, but they were not related. 70-year-old Pierre Vadrine had noticed that several of his pigs had been stolen. He had also had one of his sheep killed by Azib's dog and Azib had been seen lurking near Pierre's farm when the pigs went missing. When he was accused of the theft, Azib denied any involvement, but slipped into a deep depression. For three days, he brooded in his home until April 25, 1921, when he stepped outside holding a 12-gauge double-barrel shotgun. He then hid behind a tree near Pierre's field, and as Pierre worked the field, he got closer and closer to his end. Once within range, Vadrine fired with both barrels. The shot did extreme damage, leaving Pierre dying in the field. Vadrine fled and stashed his weapon, then joined in the posse that had formed to find the murderer. He gave himself away when he mentioned details that were not common knowledge, and he was arrested. However, in court, there was not enough evidence to find him guilty, and he walked. Vadrine would kill again eight months later. His farm was doing poorly, forcing him to seek work elsewhere. He headed out on foot towards Lafayette, Louisiana, and a taxi driver named Charles Garbo stopped to give him a ride. After a short while, Garbo stopped to check his tire, and as he did so, Azib pulled a 32 caliber pistol and shot him in the head. Once the man who had stopped to help him was dead, Vadrine took the money out of his pockets and put him in the car's back seat. He then rolled the car into a ditch and walked the rest of the way to Lafayette. This method of preying on those who offered him help had worked for Vadrine, and he would use it again. The morning after the Garbo murder, the killer was once again in search of a victim. He began chatting with a man named John Roy, who was driving towards Eunice, Louisiana. Claiming he did not have money to board the train, Azib asked if he could ride along with Roy, who agreed. As they neared Eunice, Vadrine asked Roy to stop so they could get out and smoke a cigarette. Once they were out of the car, the monster drew his pistol and shot Roy in the head, killing him. This time, he only got spare change and a worthless watch from rifling his victim's pockets. The killer would again walk to a train station and spent the next few days with his wife's father in Pine Prairie. After a few days with his wife's family, Vadrine was on the move once again in search of work, this time going to Texas. A man named Lee Duke had told him that there was work to be had in Beaumont and offered him a ride. As before, Vadrine asked the driver to stop so they could smoke a cigarette, then shot Duke in the head. In his pockets, Azib found a pistol and less than a dollar in change. After the murder of Duke, Vadrine headed home. His depression kept him in a dark mood off and on for the next few years, but his murderous impulses could not be constrained. In 1924, Vadrine would kill for the last time. On May 19, 1924, a man named Robert Leo Wiggins was on his way home when he passed Azib walking. Wiggins was the sheriff's son and offered Vadrine a ride. 
Rather than getting into the vehicle, the creature shot Wiggins at least twice. He then dragged the body behind a tree and tried to drive off, but the car would not start, so he made his escape on foot. That same day, the body was found and the town was buzzing with the news of the murder. Some had even seen a man fleeing the scene, but Vedrine had changed clothes so he would not be immediately recognized. As he had done before, Azib tried to join the posse that was searching for the killer, but he did not account for dogs being used to track down the suspect, and they led the group straight to his home where his clothing and pistol were discovered. Two days after the murder, Vedrine confessed. While in custody, the watch stolen from John Roy was found, as well as a rudimentary fingerprint match to the killer of Lee Duke. His trial began in late June of 1924. In court, he vehemently argued for himself, saying that he had been out of his mind in an alcoholic rage. Azib believed he should be sent to prison for life rather than executed. Though he claimed he was innocent initially of any murders aside from Wiggins, the evidence was mounting against him. Once a jury took less than 10 minutes to find him guilty and sentence him to death for the Wiggins murder, Vidrine knew there was nothing more they could do to him. He began writing a memoir of his crimes, and the judge even gave him more time before his execution to complete his writing. Vidrine confessed to all five murders and warned that his fate would be the same for anyone who drank alcohol and led a life of crime. A man who had been incarcerated for the murder of Lee Duke was also released from prison once the true culprit had been caught. On August 8th of 1924, the day he was to be hanged, Vidrine appeared cheerful and excited at the turnout. He posed for photographs and a moment before the trapdoor dropped, he asked for an opportunity to speak. He spent between 20 and 45 minutes eulogizing himself. Then after one last photograph, at 12.42 p.m., he was hanged. Azib Vidrine remains the first and last person to be legally hanged in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana.